Hey you guys, today I'm going to be walking you through a demonstration on creating values using pencils um, and creating like highlights and shadows using pencil. So the things that I have out today that you're going to need, you're going to need this handout from class today. You're going to need an ebony pencil. Looks like this. We also have another ebony pencil in the class that um, is black instead of gray. It's not a Prismacolor. It's just a different brand. But as long as it says ebony pencil, it will work. You are going to need um, a kneaded eraser, which looks like a little piece of chewed up gum. It's a squishy eraser. You are going to need a blending tool. I have two of them here. They look like this. It's just rolled up paper that we use to blend. And then you're also going to need a regular pencil, which I have here. You might want a sharpener. Um, you might want a gel pen. We won't necessarily need the gel pen for this project, but you might want to use it when you move on to your final for this unit. So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is drawing and applying pencil to the paper. So I had everybody today flip over to the back and we started just really click quickly with um, drawing a couple circles. And I asked everybody to start off by shading the circle first. So we started off, we colored the pencil or we colored the circle in with our pencil. And what I found was that most students did exactly what I'm doing right now. They colored in using back and forth lines like this. They used directional lines. And then I asked everybody to color in this second circle using more of like an oval shape or a circle shape, little tiny ovals and circles. So then we all practice that together. So go ahead and try those two different things. I'm using really light, really small circles to color in this shape. Now there's two things I'm noticing as I do this. One of those things is that my edges are a lot cleaner. When you color with circles or ovals as opposed to lines, you have a little bit more control, especially around edges and corners. So you're gonna have more of a sharpness. Whereas when you're coloring with lines, um, you have an easier time going outside of the lines. So this way just looks a lot cleaner. You have more control over it. The other thing we're noticing is that less white shows through the paper. So you can see in this example here, some of the white of the paper is showing up underneath. Whereas this one, there's a lot less white of the paper showing up underneath. The last thing I showed is that when we start to shade, or sorry, when we start to blend these shapes, even when I'm using my blending tool and kind of melting all of that pencil together, in the end, you can still see those scratch marks. It still looks kind of messy. You can still see the direction which I was drawing. Whereas on this circle one, or the oval one, once I've blended it together, everything kind of looks uniform. You can't really see the direction in which I colored or shaded. So as we continue on this handout today, and as you continue on to your black and white photograph drawing, I want you to be intentional about the way that you are applying pencil to the paper. So we shouldn't be coloring using scribbles or back and forth lines. We should be trying to color using little circles or little ovals. It's just gonna give us a nicer look in the end. So with that being said, I'm gonna flip this over and we're first going to start creating our grayscale over here. So we have an example of a grayscale up here. It goes from white to black with all of these different shades of gray in between. These shades of gray, we sometimes will call mid-tones. So we've got white, which is the lightest color on our value scale. And we have black, which is the darkest color on our value scale. And then we have these mid-tones, which include light gray, dark gray, medium gray. So we're gonna try to recreate this value scale down here first. Um, in this first box that says white, I don't need to do anything to it. The paper is already white. I don't have a white pencil to apply that to the paper, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. And then I'm gonna jump up here to black really quickly. I'm kind of creating my range right away so that I can then fill in the middle information. So if I have my lightest color and my darkest color, then I'm able to fill in those middle shades according to that. So I'm gonna put my regular pencil down for a minute and I'm gonna switch to my ebony pencil. 
The reason we are using an ebony pencil for the black is because ebony pencil lead is a lot softer. So I don't have to press very hard to get a dark color. Over here in the corner, you can actually practice drawing with the two different pencils. So you can feel the difference. I'm pressing really hard with my pencil right now. I can feel that the lead is hard. When I switch to my ebony pencil, I'm pressing a little bit lighter, but I'm somehow getting a darker shade. And that's because the lead is softer. It's putting more pigment onto the paper without me having to press as hard. So up here in this box where I'm trying to create black, I'm using my ebony pencil and I'm gonna color in this area pressing pretty hard because I want this to be my very darkest value that I have on the page. Notice how I'm still using my little oval or circular motions here. Alright, so now I have white and I have black. I'll label my white here too. Now I'm going to go in and create my light gray. And there's two different ways that I can make light gray. So this is where you need to pay attention to what your blending stump or your blending tool looks like. If you have a blending tool that looks like this and it's really dirty, that means there's pencil already on this blending stump. You might not even need to use your pencil to color your light gray. You could just use the pencil that's already on your blending stump and color with it to create a light gray. But maybe you have like a really clean blending stump, right? And there's not a lot of pencil on there. What you could then do is use your regular pencil and press super, super lightly. Just putting a little bit of pencil onto the paper. Pressing super lightly. Using my little ovals and circles. And then I can use my blending stump to blend that all together and make it look nice and smooth. I'm also using circular motions when I'm using my blending stump as well. Okay, so that's light gray. Now to make my medium gray, I'm still gonna use my regular pencil here, but this time I'm gonna press a little bit harder. So whereas in the light gray, I was pressing super lightly with my pencil, I'm just gonna press a little bit harder this time. It's easier to create a color that's darker or a shade that's darker later on than it is to lighten it up. So I'm gonna start off not pressing super hard because I can always go back in and add more if it's not dark enough. Then I'm gonna use my blending tool to blend it all out, make it look nice and smooth. All right, so I can clearly see the difference between my light gray and my medium gray. Now I'm gonna try to create a dark gray. So I'm trying to achieve um, a value or a shade that's in between black and medium gray. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch back to my ebony pencil. And whereas before to create black, we were pressing hard with the ebony pencil. Now I'm gonna press lightly with the ebony pencil. Because this is a softer lead, it's naturally a darker shade. Even if I'm pressing lightly with my ebony pencil, it should still turn out darker than my regular pencil could create by pressing hard. So I'm pressing lightly with my ebony pencil, going in with my little ovals and circles. And then of course, using my blending stump to blend this all together. All right, so from here, 
Maybe I'm deciding that my light gray is a little too dark, my medium gray I like, and my dark gray is a little too light. What I can do now, let me turn this light off so you don't see a glare. Much better. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna darken up my dark gray a little bit because I think it's a little bit too, too light for me. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna add another layer on. Pressing kind of lightly this time because I don't want it to be too dark. Just adding another layer, blending that other layer in. And then I mentioned that it's sometimes hard to get a lighter color um, than it is to add on and get a darker color, but it's not impossible. So if I wanted to make my light gray even lighter, I could use my kneaded eraser to pick up some of that pencil from the paper and make it lighter. Now the reason that we use kneaded erasers instead of regular erasers, let me show you exactly why. So say I'm trying to erase these lines over here. When I use a regular eraser, I am left with this eraser residue that I then have to wipe off the paper. And when you're working on your large scale black and white drawing, if you are swiping eraser residue off the paper that's full of pencil, you might end up smudging something, right? And we don't want that to happen. So what's really cool about kneaded erasers is that they erase without leaving eraser residue. They just kind of absorb the pencil that they're picking up. So there's different ways you can use the kneaded eraser. First of all, you can shape it to be the size that you want to make it easier for you to hold. And you can erase like you would with a regular eraser by kind of rubbing it back and forth. But you can also stamp the kneaded eraser onto your areas and it will pick up some of the pencils. So if I want to make my light gray lighter, I might just go in and start stamping my kneaded eraser on there. Or scraping it across the page to pick up some of that pigment. Right? And I'm not left with any eraser residue so I don't have to swipe off my page. All right. Now that I've got a nice example of a value or gray scale here, I've got my white, I've got my black, and I've got my light gray, medium gray, dark gray in between, I am ready to start applying this and making it look like um, a 3D object over here. So we're gonna use this sphere as a reference and we're gonna try to create this image. So we're starting off in this area and we're sketching out a circle or an oval. And anytime we're sketching, we should be using a regular pencil and pressing super lightly. We never want our sketches to show through at the end with any harsh lines. We're gonna blend all those out. So anytime you are sketching, you should be drawing super lightly. So I've sketched out my circle here, and then I'm actually gonna sketch out where all of my highlights and shadows are happening as well, so that I know where those different areas are. So if we look up here, we have a light source shining on the sphere. And the spot where the light source hits the sphere is right here in this area we call full light or sometimes called highlight. And if you read right here, it says that we are going to be using white for the highlight. So down on my sphere here, super, super lightly, I'm just going to sketch out where my highlight area is going to be. That's where my highlight or white area is going to be. Then I move back up here and I see I've got this area called half tone where I'm going to be using a medium gray. That's about right in this area. So I'm going to go back to my sketch here and I'm going to sketch out where my half tone or medium grays are going to be. And then I'm left with this section down here on my sphere that says shadow edge. This is going to be dark gray. So I don't need to sketch it out, it's already there. This part right here is hard to see, so I'm gonna do a little manipulating of the picture so that you can see it better. We've got this area that says reflected light and it says light gray. So normally when the light is shining on the object and it hits the table, some of the light bounces back at our eye. It's almost like a highlight, but it's not quite as bright. So it's not full white, we're not gonna be using white, we're gonna be using a light gray. But in order for this to show up on here so you can see it, I'm gonna use my gel pen just to draw it out so that you can see what I'm talking about. 
So normally there would be a little bit of reflected light down here. So on my sketch, I'm just gonna draw out a little sliver on the bottom of my sphere, almost like a little crescent moon shape. And that's where my reflected light is gonna be. And then lastly, we have our core, or I'm sorry, our cast shadow. This is gonna be the darkest um, part on our drawing here, and we're using black for that. So in order to draw my cast shadow, I'm gonna just draw some lines to show the table, the ground, the horizon line, whatever you wanna call it. And then I'm gonna sketch out where my cast shadow is gonna be. Something like this. Okay. So I've lightly sketched out where all those different values are gonna be happening. And then now I'm gonna actually start coloring those values in here. So if you remember, full light is gonna be white. We don't need to actually do anything to the paper, right? White stays just how it is. Then we have this half tone area where we're using a medium gray. Now, if you look really closely, you'll see that this half tone area actually goes from a medium gray over here to a light gray as it approaches the highlight. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is create a little bit of a gradient that goes from a medium gray into a light gray. And how I can do this is just by pressing a little bit harder right along the edges. And then as I approach my highlight, I'm just gonna stop pressing so hard. So let me show you what I mean down here. So starting along this outer edge of my half tone area, using my regular pencil, I'm pressing a little bit harder so that I get a medium gray. And as I approach my highlight, I'm lightening up to get a light gray. I'm still using my circles and ovals. It's okay if it looks kind of choppy right now because we're going to use our blending tool to blend this out later. So you can see I really haven't done any dark grays or blacks yet. I'm doing my medium gray on the outer edge of this half tone, and then as I move towards my highlight, I'm transitioning into a light gray. All right, so got that part done. Now I need to start drawing my shadow edge, which is gonna be dark gray. So if you remember when we created our dark gray, we were using the ebony pencil and we were pressing lightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my ebony pencil. And same thing as I did for this half tone area, I'm actually going from a dark gray almost into a medium gray. I want it to be a smooth transition. So I'm gonna start with my dark gray on the outer edge, but as I head towards this half tone area in the middle here, I'm gonna try to lighten up um, how hard I'm pressing with the pencil. So I've got my perimeters marked. I'm gonna start with my ebony pencil, pressing pretty lightly, but as I had head towards um, the center here, I'm just lightening up how hard I'm pressing. And I'm still sort of seeing a line that's happening in between these two different shadow areas, these two different values. But my hope is that when I start to blend, that line will disappear. And then lastly at the bottom here, we've got our little area of reflected light. Now it's really important that in the end, your reflected light should be light gray, not white. Our highlight is the closest to the light source, so that needs to be the brightest spot on the page. 
But for right now, I'm not gonna color anything in here because I think that if I use my blending stump later and blend some of those darker shades into that reflected light area, I'll get a light gray without even putting in any of the pencil on the paper. Kind of like we did over here with the blending stump. We were able to achieve a light gray without even coloring that section in. So I'm not gonna do anything with that yet. So lastly, we're gonna move on to our cast shadow. This should be the darkest spot on your page. We're using black. So if you remember from over here, to create black, we used our ebony pencil and we were pressing hard. So I'm gonna start all underneath my sphere here. That's gonna be where the darkest values are happening. And then as I move out towards the edge of the shadow, I'm gonna lighten up a little bit. So I'm going from a black to a dark gray as I move outwards, as I move away from the sphere. So starting right up close, I'm pressing hard with my ebony pencil to achieve a black. And then as I move outwards, I'm lightening up my pressure. Now that we've got everything drawn out, we can move on to blending it all together. So I'm gonna start blending in the lighter areas and then move outwards to the darker areas. I don't wanna start in the darker areas and then move towards the lighter areas because then my blending stump is gonna get a whole bunch of pencil on it and then I might have a hard time achieving some of those whiter highlights because I'm gonna be putting pencil onto those areas. So I'm just gonna start by softening up this line. I don't want there to be a harsh line between my highlights because it's happening gradually here. So I'm gonna use my clean blending, uh, blending stump here and I'm gonna just go in with little circles and smooth out that line so it's not harsh anymore. And then I'm just gonna continue doing this, moving in an outward direction and blending all of our pencil together here. So you'll see again, as I move in from my half tones and into my shadow edge, that line that I was talking about, that harsh line, we're just blending it out so that it doesn't exist anymore. Got a nice smooth transition between values or between tones. And then like I talked about earlier, I do not want to leave this like a stark white. Right now it's way brighter than my highlight is. I don't want it to be brighter than my highlight. My highlight is the closest point to my light source, therefore it should be the brightest. This is reflected light, so it's lighter than the surrounding areas, but it's not as light as the highlight. So I'm just using my blending stump to shade that in. You can still see that it's lighter than the surrounding areas, but it's not as light as my highlight. And then lastly, I am blending out my cast shadow here. Making sure this edge is nice and smooth. I don't want a harsh edge to my shadow. Some shadows will have harsh edges, but the example that we're looking at here does not. So I'm following what I see on the paper. All right. And I think that looks pretty good. If I decided that my highlight was maybe not light enough, I could go in with my kneaded eraser and lighten it up a little bit. And then maybe I go back in with my blending tool and blend it so it looks a little bit more smooth. If you have edges that are rough, you can use your regular pencil to help smooth those out. You can go in with your kneaded eraser, clean up some of those edges. And then you're left with your realistic looking sphere here. Okay? So now I just wanna show you how we're gonna be applying this as we move into our photorealistic shading project. So 
Hopefully you have already found a black and white photo, black and white photograph that you are using as a reference. This is the one that I chose. I went ahead and put my clear grid on top of it, lined it up nice on two edges and figured out how big my grid needs to be. And then on a separate piece of paper, I redrew that grid, same size, one by one inch, and I've already started to map out my lines. So I haven't done any shading so far. We're gonna wait to do shading until everything is mapped out. Turn my light back on here. So I have mapped out where all of my lines are happening. And then I've actually went in and started to map out where some of my highlights and shadows are happening as well. So if you remember on this handout, how we mapped out where our highlights were gonna be, where our different um, mid-tones were gonna be, I've started to do that on this page as well. So you can see like on her earring here, oh man, turn my light off again. On her earring here, I noticed that there was a little shadowy area. So on my sketch, I drew that shadowy area in. I also noticed on this picture that her cheek was nice and highlighted. So on my sketch, I went in and I mapped out where that highlight was happening on her cheek, right? So I've started to section off where my highlights and shadows are gonna be so that I know where they are later on. Once everything is mapped out, you've got all your lines in, then you need to go in and erase your grid. We don't want our grid to show in the end. We just want our image to show. So once you have done all your major outlines and once you've mapped out where your highlights and shadows are gonna be, then you can erase your grid. But don't do that until you know where everything needs to go. And then once your grid is erased, you don't need your grid on your photo anymore. So I can take my grid off. Now I can see where my shading is happening better. And once I've erased all my grid lines and I'm ready to start, I can go in and start shading my image using the mapped out highlight and shadow areas and using the techniques that I learned here today. All right, thank you for following along. Let me know in class if you guys have any questions on anything I've shown in this video.